continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of the Prophet Isaiah The Book of the Prophet Isaiah Chapter 24 Chapter 24 Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away, the haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. The mirth of tabrets ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree, and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice, they shall sing for the majesty of the Lord, they shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, My leanness, my leanness, woe unto me! The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously, yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down, the earth is clean dissolved, the earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together, as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed, when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem, and before his ancients gloriously. Chapter 25 O Lord, Thou art my God, I will exalt Thee, I will praise Thy name, for Thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For Thou hast made of a city an heap, of a defensed city a ruin, 
a palace of strangers, to be no city. It shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest and Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, as he that swimmeth spreadeth forth his hands to swim, and he shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands. And the fortress of the high fort of thy walls shall he bring down, lay low, and bring to the ground, even to the dust. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yes, we should pity the man in this world who must use the earth for a bed. And I guess we should pity the man who must toil from dawn till dust falls bread. But this can 
be rich if they have contentment and sharing for salvation plan. But if you know any who do, they have plenty. I must then pity the man. Praise the Lord. Church has said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. I pray it will be a blessed moment together in Jesus' name. 
better amen than that <clears throat> heavenly father we thank you for the bible study we bless your name for bringing us together and we know you are going to instruct us yourself you teach us by the holy spirit i will pray lord your word will be of tremendous benefit to everyone in jesus name and you grant us the strength and the grace to be obedient to your word and to live to please you at all times and in all things in jesus name we well, thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray tonight we're coming to first corinthians chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 1 all through to verse 9 first corinthians chapter 3 reading from verse 1 and i brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal even as unto babes in christ then in verse 2 it goes on to say i fed you with milk and not with meat for he that told ye were not able to bear it neither yet now are ye able for ye are yet carnal for whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions are ye not carnal and walk as men for while one says i am of paul and another i am of apollos are ye not carnal who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom he believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. Then it says in verse 6, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planted anything, neither he that water is but god that giveth the increase in verse 8 now he that planteth and he that water is are one and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor verse 9 the concluding verse tonight for we are laborers together with god ye are god's husbandry ye are god's building in those verses which we have read together verses one through to nine we're looking at the carnality of the corinthian christians it's a disease and that's why we're talking about curing the disease of carnality before possible spiritual growth if we're going to grow in the grace of god carnality must be removed if we're going to grow in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ if we're going to grow in the gifts of god if we're going to grow in godliness if we're going to grow in all the things we possess and we're not going to remain at the baby stage all our christian life carnality must be dealt with and carnality will be dealt with as sickness spiritual sickness as a disease that god has a cure for but we have to desire that that cure that deliverance and that recovery will come unto us <clears throat> therefore we're talking about curing the disease of carnality before we can have possible spiritual growth three things we're looking at in the study tonight number one the carnality of unsound preferences among the weaklings the weaklings are those who are weak they're weak in faith they're weak in understanding they're weak in their christian life and they're weak in pursuing the goal the lord has set before them and because they're weak they're not sound and they have their preferences which is not according to the word of god and so we're going to describe the carnality of unsound preferences among the weaklings number two the calling of unselfish preachers and watchmen 
as we look at Paul the Apostle, and then as we look at Apollos and Peter called Sabers in this passage, we know that they were preachers of the gospel. They were watchmen over the people. The Lord raised them up as teachers and preachers of the word of God. And thank God, although the Corinthians were carnal, those preachers themselves, they were not carnal. They were spiritual, they were selfish, and they were godly, and they did what they ought to do according to the word of God. And when there was something to correct in the Corinthian church, they swept in very quickly to make sure that those things were corrected, the calling of unselfish preachers and watchmen. Point number three, the commitment of unswerving planters and waterers. You hear Paul the Apostle saying he has planted and Apollos watered. He says that those two areas of ministry, sections of ministry, they were working together, one planting, one evangelizing, one bringing people into the kingdom and planting the seed of the gospel, the planters, and then those who do follow up, those who develop the disciples and those who follow up on the converse, they are the people that water, we we'll call them waterers, and it says they're united. They are planting and wandering together and they are doing the same work, they have the same goal and they are pursuing the same thing, the, the edification and the upliftment and the growth of those uh, converts who are committed to that, the commitment of unwavering planters and waterers. Let's come to number one, we are looking at the carnality of unsound preferences among the weaklings. Look at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and we're reading now from verse 1. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 we're looking at uh, verse 1 it says, And I brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. And then in verse 2 we are told, he said, I have fed you with meal, and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it. He says in that verse 2, that he fed them with a meal, and not with meat, because either two, they were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. He was looking at those babes in Christ, and was looking at them as they were developing. They were slow in their development, because they remained babes and they were carnal. And then it says in verse 3, it says in verse 3, for ye are yet carnal, they had preached unto them, they had become born again, they were converted, they were believers, <clears throat> they were children of God, and yet he said, for ye are yet carnal, but whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? As we look at the description of this terrible sickness upon the people, that is the sickness of carnality among them. Number one, we're going to have the description. Number two, we're going to have their diet. And number three, we're going to look at the divisions that that carnality brought in the midst of the children of God, in the midst of the believers at Corinth. Number one, the description of carnal babes in Christ. The description, uh, they were Christians, they were born again, they were children of God. In fact, they literally have the gift of God. They had some of the gifts of the Spirit. And yet, with all that, they were still carnal in their understanding and carnal in their demonstration of their Christian life and Christian commitment. The description of carnal babes in Christ. What kind of food were they eating? What kind of spiritual diet did they have? As Paul the Apostle said, I've been feeding you with milk. 
all the things you think you know all the things you pride yourself in everything is still milk milk i cannot feed you with meat yet because you are carnal and you cannot bear the weight and you cannot bear the nutrients of the uh, meat i would have given you the diet of carnal believers at corinth and then number three the division and carnal behavior of christians anywhere we see those uh, kinds of behavior today that were found in corinth that paul the apostle was trying to correct that he brought the word of god to bear on them that they should not be grow up grow up in your understanding grow up in your fellowship and grow up in your receptivity of the word of god anywhere we find that kind of slow growth and carnality it's just like the corinthian christians and god has a solution and i pray that it will bring total solution in every one of our lives in our whole church in jesus name i thought the church will say amen number one then how do you describe when you see a carnal babe in christ born again real child of god is no more living in the scene of the old life but then is still carnal what description do we give unto them and that brings us to first corinthians chapter 3 we're looking at verses 3 and 4 in verse 3 it says in verse 3 for ye are yet carnal for whereas there is among you envying and strife and division are ye not carnal and walk as men and then in verse 4 it says in verse 4 for one while one says i'm a paul and another i'm, I'm a Apollos, are ye not carnal you understand the carnality is dealing with here and there are different areas of carnality there are unbelievers total unbelievers they have never known the lord they have not accepted jesus christ they have not repented of their sins they have not been born again they are not citizens of the kingdom of god they are completely in darkness they don't have the grace of god in them there is a kind of carnality they manifest but now on the other hand those who claim to be born again those who claim to be children of God and those who claim that they have known the Lord and the grace of God is in them and the Spirit of God is bearing witness in their heart they were children of God and even the apostle is saying you come behind in no gift at all you are washed and you are cleansed and yet he says there's a kind of behavior that is regarded as carnal among such people let me first of all show you the carnality of those who never knew the lord those who have not been born again those who are completely total aren't unbelievers inside their unbelievers language their unbelievers in their will their unbelievers in their disposition their unbelievers in their lifestyle their unbelievers they are not members of the kingdom of god they are not citizens of the kingdom of god they are completely totally carnal people romans chapter 8 in romans chapter 8 we're looking at verse 6 this one is referring to total unbelievers is telling us in romans chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 6 it says for to be carnally minded is death this one leads to death spiritual death separation from god and eternal death if anybody dies in this condition it says for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you see the two things contrasted there the people who are spiritual they have life they have eternal life they have christ-like life they have godly life they have a gracious life and they have peace the peace of god the priests of priests raised in their hearts those are people who are spiritual but the opposite of the contrast are the people who are carnally minded look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says because the carnal mind is enmity against god you understand these are total sinners they hate god they hate the word of god they hate the christ of god 
they hate all the seeds that God opposed and everything that God wants they hate everything completely they turn their back they turn their mind against God because they are sinners they are carnal because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be these are people that will oppose the word of God will oppose the gospel of God will oppose the grace of God will oppose the plan of salvation they hate that and they will not subject themselves they will not submit themselves to the love of God to the law of God to the gospel of Christ neither indeed can they be even if they tried they don't have the grace to do that and they are carnal then it says in verse 8 in verse 8 it says so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God these are the people who remain in the works of the flesh and it says because they're practicing the works of the flesh and they're totally in the flesh they do not have the grace of God in them they are carnal they are sinful they are fleshly they are dead spiritually and if anyone died in that condition he will not be with God forever but now let's come to those who are born again and those who claim they're children of God and yet it says they are carnal it tells us in uh, in uh, first Corinthians chapter 3 chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 14 in first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 it talks about uh, it says for the natural mind receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him neither can they can, neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned that's still talking about the, the uh, one who is carnal but natural and fleshly and he cannot discern he cannot accept the things of God now we come to Ephesians chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 14 Ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 14 it, say, it says that we henceforth be no more children that we henceforth be no more toddlers that we henceforth be no more babies tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sledge of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive and this is a, a kind of um, a Christianity that is babyish that is at the very lowest level and it says they are driven about and they are carried about by every wind of doctrine because they don't have understanding they listen to Paul they say that's right they listen to Apollos they say that's right but they listen to another person they also say that's right anybody carrying the Bible anybody mentioning the name of Jesus they do not know their left from their right and then eventually they begin to make choices I prefer this one I prefer that one and they are carnal and then when they have any problem when they have any issue they will apply carnal methods to solve the problem in 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 reading from verse 3 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 we're looking at verse 3 it says for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh in verse 4 it says it says for, our, for the weapons of our war here are not carnal that is those who are matured those who are real children of God and those who are walking in the way of righteousness in the path that leads to heaven they will not use carnal weapons but you know the people who say they are Christians and the people who say they are born again but they see babies in Christ and they're still carnal like the uh, Corinthian believers were carnal they will use carnal weapons to solve uh, their problems if they see what the people of the world are doing uh, to make a change in the community or to make a change in society they truly they think that they can do that as well and if they see that you know by force by a carnal weapon by fleshly weapon by worldly weapon you know some then they begin to listen to them or they say that's how to get attention because they are not matured they are babies and they are carnal that's why they use the carnal weapons but those who are matured 
and those who are spiritual and those who are saved and then their wheels are turned unto the Lord and they're giving themselves totally unto the Lord and they're spiritual and they're sanctified and they're matured in the doctrine of the word of God they have self-denial and they have total submission unto the Lord they are not carnal they will not use carnal weapons to solve any problem now let's come back to first Corinthians chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 2 we're looking at now the diet of carnal believers at Corinth the believers in the church at Corinth what kind of diet did they have? What kind of food, spiritual, were they eating? And what kind of thing were they taking in? Because you are what you eat. You are what you eat, whether natural or spiritual. If you are only dealing with milk, your bone will not be strong. Your backbone will not be strong. You take the bottle of milk and every time it's milk and milk and milk and you do not have any balanced diet, you are not going to be strong. That's why Paul the Apostle said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, looking at verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Have you known some, you know, Christians like that? They are born again, no doubt. They are children of God, no doubt. And any time you are talking about healing, they are, they are full of energy and vigor. They say, yes, praise the Lord, pastor, preach on. That's what I want. And then you talk about success. They say, that's, what I, that's why I came here. And then you talk about overcoming, not overcoming Satan, overcoming temptation, overcoming trial, but overcoming all the hurdles of life. And then you have enough food. You have money, you have prosperity, you have all the material things. They say, yes, pastor, preach on, God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's what they want. But when you now go on and you say, let's grow up. We're going to talk about sanctification today. We're going to talk about holiness today. And then you come to them. We're talking about self-denial today. If you're going to follow Christ, it's not everything you see that you're going to follow. You must deny yourself. We're talking about consecration now. You lay everything upon the altar. And then you surrender your will. You say, not my will, but thine be done. And whatsoever you want me to do, anywhere you want me to go, that where I'm going, you bring the doctrine and the teaching of absolute surrender, total yieldedness. They say, well, I didn't enjoy the service today. Why? Didn't they preach the Bible? Yes, too much Bible. Didn't they preach a sound doctrine? Yes, too much doctrine. You're talking about sanctification, about self-denial, about absolute surrender. But you know, they didn't talk about how we get this, how we climb every mountain, how we become the first in life, and then we'll be the head and will not be the tail. All they're looking for every time is the milk is the encouragement is the comfort is you know god will bless you and then they don't want anybody to talk about if anyone backslides this is the consequence they are for meal and that's why paul the apostle said Corinthian believers you know what i've been feeding you with milk everything you have known how about the gifts of the spirit all that is still milk i about the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge i about power to overcome that's still milk because you know if you have all the faith in the world to move mountains and you do not have the love that surrenders and submits totally to god you're still nothing and so he was telling them that everything they got was milk and he would have given them meat but they were not ready and they were not capable of taking the meat he said ye were not able to bear it neither yet now are ye able i must ask you some questions when did you get born again when did you come into the kingdom of god what kind of messages turn you on what kind of message messages make you really happy anytime you're coming to the service what kind of message are you expecting i hope they'll talk about this today 
I hope they'll talk about that today. You have been 20 years in the kingdom of God and you have been 30 years in the church and yet the very basic and the low level understanding is what you have and any time we talk about the duty and the responsibility and the challenges of consecration of a real child of God uh, you know you are very slow you cannot pray but when we talk about you know success about uh, food and about um, all the things we are going to achieve and all the accomplishments then you can pray and shout what kind of Christian is that I have fed you with milk and not with meat for he that too ye were not able to bear it neither yet now are ye able i pray that god will move us on and will be able to have strong meat in jesus name and look at hebrews chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 12 hebrews chapter 5 reading from verse 12 for when for the time ye ought to be teachers when for the time ye ought to be teachers ye have need that won't teach you again which be the very first principles of the oracles of, of god and have become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat here we find the christians the hebrew christians as well they were of that same nature so tender and so weak they have no backbone they couldn't take any challenge if any wind was blowing it would blow them down because they couldn't take anything more than milk and the lord is encouraging us encouraging you and i we should not be like that we should grow up and we should have more that we take more than we have taken before i pray that the ability to take strong meat and to take sound doctrine without sitting without choosing this and that i pray the lord will give every one of us in jesus name and look at luke chapter 24 in luke chapter 24 we're reading from verse 25 luke chapter 24 reading from verse 25 then he said unto them this christ talking to uh, some of the disciples after his resurrection then he said unto them O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken you see the lord jesus christ had been with them for more than three years actually about three and a half years he taught them from the foundation of his very life and then he taught them about calvary he taught them about the cross he taught them about redemption he taught them about what he was going to do on the cross to sacrifice his life for the redemption and salvation of the total of humanity and then to rise again for our justification after he taught them that he told them he will rise on the third day and he died he was buried on the third day they didn't expect that a resurrection even though he had mentioned it and he emphasized it over and over many times and now when he saw them going to a mouse they were discussing they were sorrowful and he said what kind of discussion is this that you have oh they said about jesus and we thought we'll have delivered the children of israel and the nation of israel from the roman government that's why he now said who fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken they were still like the corinthian christians carnal in their understanding but now let's come back to corinth we're looking at first corinthians chapter 3 we're looking at verse 3 in first corinthians chapter 3 reading from verse 3 it says for ye are yet carnal you understand how sorrowful paul the apostle must be because he had spent solid one and a half years at corinth teaching them over and over and he taught them everything that he knew they should have and yet when he came for the next meeting they asked some questions and the questions will show that they didn't understand what he had taught earlier and he over emphasized that emphasized that over and over and yet now after one and a half years and he left them to go to other places apollo's chill had come there had taught them 
surprisingly it says for ye are yet carnal and it says for whereas the race among you envying and strife and divisions think about that among you envies and strife and divisions could that be well look at your own district look at your own region and look at your own state and look at how you accept the ministers of god look at how you accept the preachers of the word of god and look at how in your heart why is that one the leader why is that one the preacher why is it that one they put there at this time i prefer this i prefer that exactly what happened at corinth that they were making choices they were making their preferences i don't like this one i like that one look at the local church among the various sections of workers we have the children we have the youth we have the campus we have the women and we have the adults how do we relate one to the other and then even within the adult church we have the ushers we have security we have choir and we have all the various sections how do we relate, how do we relate with one another and when somebody is corrected and when somebody is said you go from this to that side how do we respond how do we react that's what happened at Corinth they will say I don't appreciate that I don't want that why should a brother so and so sister so and so go to that section why not remain with us here I don't like uh, the way they are making reorganization it says for ye are yet carnal the people who are no more thinking about evangelism they're no more thinking about reaching out and they're no more thinking about bringing others into the kingdom all they can think about now is their position and the position of other people and they quarrel about that and they complain about that and they gossip about that and they murmur about that that's the carnality we find in the church at Corinth and it should not be found in our church I said it should not be found in our church why because look at the name of the church deeper life bible church deeper christian life ministry if you put the word deeper that means you've gone beyond the suffix that means you are no more just milk milk all the time if you put the word deeper that means you are not shallow you are not just even deep on the surface you are really deep in the things of the lord and we should not be carnal envy should not be among us and fighting for position and they quarreling because of position and place seeking and better than him i should be there she is uh, not as good as me i should be there how long are they going to be there that sister has been in that area now for you know all this time when is it going to be my turn all that is carnality and that is the kind of carnality uh, that paul the apostle was correct you know, in the church at corinth there was envy and there was strife a strife will bring debate strife will bring argument and strife will bring pride and it says and there are divisions among you and see if there are those things there are ye not carnal and walk as men i pray that the lord will kill us completely of every form of carnality in jesus name give me a good day. amen we're coming to point number two now point number two the calling of unselfish preachers and watchmen unselfish preachers and watchmen we need to praise god for paul the apostle and we need to praise god for apollos a minister of god we need to praise god for peter also save us why because even though the corinthian church in their membership they were taking sides i prefer this i prefer this i prefer that we thank god that that kind of carnality was not in paul was not in apollos and was not in peter and we need to come back home to our own 
own church even if uh, the young converts and the babes in christ if they are having all those preferences i about those of us who are workers i about those of us who are ministers i about those of us who have known the lord all these many years are we like the babes in christ are we like the members of the church like unfortunately paul and, and barnabas to uh, paul and uh, apollos too will be saying know your place i know my place you stay there and i stay up here you know who is greater and and then there's also strife among them if strife comes among the ministers if strife comes among the workers then those workers and those workmen and those watchmen they become like the canal members and when the leader is the same as the follower and when the preachers are the same as the people on the pew and when the apostles are the same as the young ones there is no hope but it is when the leaders it is when the ministers whether they are state overseers or their region overseers or their um, whatever title they have they stay at a higher level they stay at a deeper level and they're able to take their stand and they're not in agreement with the corinthian babes who are arguing and their strife concerning the position and concerning the personality of the of the ministers then there is hope for the church and so those of us who are leaders we need to examine ourselves and find out are we as matured as paul the apostle are we as matured as apollos that we will not allow that kind of strife that kind of division and that kind of envy to be among us who are leaders that's why we're looking at this section now that is the calling of unselfish preachers and watchmen we're reading from first corinthians chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 4 it says for while one says i am a paul and another i am of apollos are ye not carnal and then in verse 5 it tells us in verse 5 who then is paul and who is apollos but ministers by whom ye believed even as the lord gave to every man he says the lord gave to every man that is if uh, paul was an apostle that's the calling of god for him if apollos was a preacher a minister that's the call of god for him if barnabas was a prophet that's the call of god for him if timothy was an evangelist to do the work of an evangelist that's the call of god for him if titus is a pastor that's the call of god for him if a Epaphroditus is a teacher that's the call of God for him in whichever stage in whichever place the Lord has placed you you remain under the call of God under the anointing that God has bestowed upon you that's why he says by whom ye have believed even as the Lord gave to every man wouldn't it be wonderful that you are a minister and you're a worker and you're satisfied with what God has given you you're in the women's section you're satisfied with what God has given you you're on the campus you're satisfied with what God has given you you're among the youth you're satisfied with God what God has given you and there's no carnal competition and there's no worldly competition and there's no political strife and there, there's no place seeking there's no stamping upon the other one so that you can come up and you accept totally and completely whatever the lord has given you and instead of abandoning what god has given you and then looking ahead i want to be that i want to be this you remain submissive to the calling of god in your life there are three things we're looking at number one is the divine call of paul and apollos there are different calls the lord had called paul the apostle he had also called apollos look at that in uh, first timothy chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 3 first timothy chapter 2 and we're looking at verse 3 it tells us in first timothy 
chapter 2 verse 3 it says for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior in verse 4 it tells us who oh, will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth verse 5 tells us then it says for there is one God and one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus in verse 6 it tells us who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time look at verse 7 now in verse 7 whereunto I am ordained whereunto I Paul I am ordained a preacher and an apostle I speak the truth in Christ I lie not and a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity uh, what wouldn't it be wonderful if somebody can be satisfied in the place where he is you're ministering in a state you're ministering in a, in a region you're ministering as a group pastor or you're ministering as a district pastor or you're ministering in whatever section whatever area and you say i am ordained to be this and to do this and i'm not i i'm not envious of any other thing i am satisfied because here is where i'm going to establish the people in faith and in verity it tells us in acts of the apostles chapter 26 acts chapter 26 we're reading from verse 18 he knew the purpose for which he was called and he remained in that purpose it tells us in chapter 26 verse 16 Acts of the Apostles chapter 26 reading from verse 16 it says but rise and stand upon thy feet for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose underline those two words this purpose have you not have you understood for what purpose God appeared unto you for what purpose you are brought into the kingdom for what purpose you are and you are either a teacher or a pastor or a coordinator or a leader anything you are doing for this purpose i appeared unto you if you know the purpose why you are in the kingdom if you know the purpose where he has placed you and another brother knows his own purpose another sister knows his own purpose there'll be no conflict and there'll be no fighting and there'll be no competition as to you know i want to be there and she wants to be there but paul the apostle said i can recollect i can remember that god told me i appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of the things in the which i will appear unto thee in verse, in verse 17 it says delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom now i send thee I'm sending you to the Gentiles, that's my purpose. I'm sending you to the children of Israel, that's my purpose. He knew the purpose and he knew where he was sent. He didn't have to, you know, try to campaign and try to politicize the ministry. Don't you think I can do this? Don't you think I can do that? Look at the place they just put me and I'm restricted and I'm limited here. What do you think? And you people are just quiet. You're not even praying for me and you are not uh, methodically uh, making way for me to be this and to be that Paul the apostle didn't have to do that and you don't have to do that because God has sent each one to fulfill a particular role look at verse 18 in verse 18 it says to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me the call of Paul the apostle was very clear 
the call of Apollos was also clear. We're told in Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 18, reading from verse 24 to verse 28. And eventually, when he went uh, to Ephesus in chapter 29, in chapter 19, uh, all, all he ought to do was very clear and they catch their distinct ministries. Let's go to the second section now. The distinct commission for preachers and ambassadors. The distinct commission for preachers and uh, ambassadors. We're coming back to First Corinthians chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 5. For it says, who then is Paul or who is Apollos? Both ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to everyone, as the Lord gave to everyone, is the Lord who has appointed us, is the Lord who has appointed his ministers, the preachers, the pastors, the shepherds, the overseers, is the Lord who has appointed them. And he knows what he was looking for. He knows what he has seen in the lives and in the development, in the growth of all those ministers. And so since we know he has given to everyone according to his will, there should be no competition then. There should be no infighting. And then for the ambassadors, he tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 18, he tells us that we ambassadors, we also have a role to play, all things of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us, has given to us the ministry of reconciliation has given to us the ministry of reconciliation you understand that uh, sinners are separated from god and the lord has called us believers to be soul winners to be evangelists to be ambassadors of christ and to reconcile men unto god and to bring sinners to the savior and make them to see the savior make them to know the savior make them to turn away from their sin and turn from the world and turn from the devil and turn from darkness and turn unto the lord jesus christ and then they are regenerated they are converted they are born again and they are reconciled unto god and here the word of god says he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation you see there are people they will leave that ministry of reconciliation what are they doing? They go to the management and administration. Brother, that's not what God has given you. Do what God has given you. Leave all that administration alone. They want to control this and control that and control that. They say, I can do that. Actually, in the world, this is what I do. I control this. I manage this. I manage that. And the people they put there, they are not doing it as they ought to do it. And therefore, instead of concentrating on the ministry of reconciliation, evangelism, and edification of the church and preaching to the people of God stay where God has put them they want to put their mouth there their hand there their leg there they want to be in charge of everything and they are asking questions hey, about this what's going on in your section there what's going on in your section there that's not what God has given you recognize the distinct commission that the Lord has given to the preachers, that the Lord has given to the ambassadors. He tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, he says in verse 19, say telling us about the ministry of the ambassador to which that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, reconciling the world unto himself. And let, let's, uh, let's uh, think about this. The people of the world who are not born again, they need to be reconciled unto God so that when they die, they will go to heaven. Now, what if we all abandon that ministry of reconciliation 
and the little uh, the little uh, membership that we have you know somebody comes and he says i'm going to stay with those uh, with the little membership and reorganize this and reorganize that it's like you have a little room and then in that room you have tables you have chairs and then we put the chair this way we put the table that way somebody says he lives and uh, what he ought to do reconciling the world unto god and bringing the word of evangelism and bring the, the word of salvation and bringing the word of regeneration and the word of repentance and the word of the grace of god he leaves that and he comes to that little room and then he reorganizes and I says this and put the chair apart there another chair there and he says i like the arrangement now and then instead of still leaving that and going and evangelizing and going and reaching out to the regions beyond the people who have never heard he comes back to that same little room again he says you know it's been some weeks now since it's been like this he reorganizes again he wastes a whole life on administration instead of moving on to reconciling the world unto God but you know Paul the apostle he knew why God called him he knew the commission and he knew the commitment he knew the consecration of an ambassador he knew the consecration of a preacher of the gospel that's why he says in that verse 19 to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and has given unto us has given unto us not unto them others may I cannot here is my concentration here is what I ought to do he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation then in verse 20 it tells us in verse 20 now then we are not we were not we shall be god i'm coming i need to finish this i like this one now let me concentrate on this and concentrate on that but you know it wasn't like that paul the apostle did not say i will abandon what the lord has given me to do i'll concentrate on extra moral activities some other things that god has not called him to i'm emphasizing that for you to think about yourself what has god called you to to be a preacher and to be a pastor to be an overseer and to do the work of reconciling men unto god are you concentrating on that do you love that do you appreciate that or are you saying i wish i were doing another thing paul the apostle said now then we are ambassadors for christ as though god did beseech you by us we pray you in christ's stead be ye reconciled to god we pray you we plead with you he was passionate about it he was persuasive about it that was his sole commitment and consecration be ye reconciled unto god and that ought to be your concentration and that ought to be your commitment that you know that god has called you to concentrate on bringing sinners into the kingdom and preaching the word of god not just staying in a local place and reorganizing and rearranging and administering and doing this and that but bringing the word of salvation to the people that have not heard and it's not that you are sitting there expecting sinners to come you're actually reaching out to them you're going to the regions beyond you're going to the towns you're going to the villages and you're going to all those places you're seeking for sinners what Jesus did when he was here on earth that he came to seek and to save that which was lost that's what the Lord has committed into our hands that's what we're going to do in Jesus name you'll do it in Jesus name you and your husband will do it in Jesus name you and your wife will do it in Jesus name and your children will not discourage you your children will not say daddy where are you going again I'm going where the Lord has sent me 
to go and preach the gospel to every creature and then they that believe and are baptized will be saved and if we don't go to them to preach to them those who don't believe they will be lost i pray nobody will be lost because of our carelessness in jesus name now as we talk about the preachers and uh, when people are called to be preachers for example we have paul and barnabas and the holy ghost said the holy ghost said separate unto me paul and barnabas for the work i have appointed them to and all the other members of the church and all the other leaders in the church they accepted that and they encouraged them and they laid hands on them and they fasted and they prayed and they sent them forth that is the way it was in the early church because the early church whether they were called or the friends of those who were called or the neighbors of those who were called they knew the distinct commission of those preachers and of those ambassadors and they never discouraged anyone there are people that will discourage a minister when it is we hear that you are now there we hear that you are now there how are you doing there and what's the condition the climate there is it too much heat there is it different from where you were before well we're praying for you that you will abandon those people let them perish and come and stay with us here we just like to see your face whether people are perishing or not those people they are worse than carnal people People, the wicked people they do not want preachers to go and minister to other people they do not know the distinct commission of the preachers and the ambassadors that's why they're doing that I pray you'll not be guilty of that in Jesus name I'm waiting for headquarters amen Ezekiel chapter 3 Ezekiel chapter 3 we're looking at verse 17 Ezekiel chapter 3 we're reading here from verse 17 here is the Lord talking to Ezekiel as he's talking to you and talking to me and talking to the people he has called and the people he has appointed he says son of man you can put your name there if God has called you if God is calling you if God is sending you forth if God has sent you forth but your name there son of man I have made thee I have made thee I have made thee a watchman think about that if God the Almighty says I have made so and so an overseer I've made so and so a watchman I've made so and so a pastor I've made so and so a winner of souls and then you on the other hand you say God you must be wrong your God we don't accept that how can you call Ezekiel how can you make this a watchman no we disagree with that then you are not a child of God if you are not submitting to even the will of God in other people's lives how do you submit to the will of God in your own life but it says son of man I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them a warning from me and then it says in verse 8 it says when I say unto the wicked thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speakest to warn the wicked from the wicked from his wicked way and to save his life the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will I require at thine hand if God has called you to be a preacher, if God has called you to be an overseer, if God has called you to be an ambassador reconciling the world unto himself, and you allow the pressure of people, and you allow their worldly statement, their worldly comment, and their worldly discouragement and distraction to sway you, and then to give up what the Lord has called you for, the blood of the souls you should have won will be required at your hand and the people that made you to abandon the ministry abandon the calling and come and stay on administration and come and stay on reorganization and come and stay on this and that the blood as is required in your hand will be required in their hands as well and he tells us in verse 19 in verse 19 it says yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness 
ways, nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. In verse 20, he tells us again, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. A righteous man who had been sinned before, a righteous man who had committed his life to the Lord, he allows temptation, he allows carelessness, he allows backsliding, he allows depravity to come back again, he allows defilement, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. In verse 21, he tells us, Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he is one. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. We come to number three now, is the definite confirmation uh, with power and anointing the definite confirmation with power and anointing we're looking at first corinthians chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 5 first corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 who then is paul and who is apollos but ministers by whom ye believed even as the lord gave to every man even as the lord gave to every man a definite confirmation with power and anointing as you look at the uh, ministry of paul the apostle and you look at the ministry of apollos and all the other people in the new testament how god called them how god anointed them how god empowered them how god sent them forth they manifested the anointing and they manifested the power of the holy ghost in their lives look at romans chapter 15 reading from verse 18 in romans chapter 18 reading from verse 15 this is where paul the apostle is giving testimony as to how the lord has led him and how he administered in all the places he went and it's an encouragement for you and for me that if god has sent us anywhere to do anything in calling sinners unto christ in calling sinners to the savior the same power that he gave them he gives us today because jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever and what he did with those ministers and leaders in days gone by is still able to do today and he will do today in jesus name we're looking in at romans chapter 15 verse 18 for i will not dare to speak of any of those things which christ has not wrought by me to make the gentiles obedient by word and deed and then in verse 19 it says through mighty signs and wonders when he preached through mighty signs and wonders and when he declared christ as savior christ as healer christ as deliverer and christ as the one that is able to save them now there were mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of god so that from jerusalem and round about illyricum i have fully preached the gospel of christ he had fully preached the gospel of christ it says in verse 20 in verse 20 years so have i strive to preach the gospel not where christ was named that is the people that have never heard about christ at all he preached the gospel unto them lest i should build upon another man's foundation in verse 21 he says but as it is written to whom he was not spoken of they shall hear and they that have not heard shall understand i pray that as god sends us to the regions beyond and to the states beyond and to the countries beyond everywhere sinners are and he sends us forth to go and reach out to them will go without looking back in jesus name you will go without looking back in jesus name your amen is that real
Is that genuine? And when the call comes, that amen will still be there in Jesus' name. By coming to point number three now, point number three is the commitment of unswerving planters and waterers. Planters, those are church planters. They go to a new environment. They go to a new place where the church had not been planted, where the church had not been established. And they go single-handedly with the gospel in their heart and with the preaching coming out of their mouth and with the power of the Spirit of God. And they go to reach out to those people and churches are planted and then they have to leave uh, to go and plant in other places and then they leave a play a water that will water the seeds that had been sown that's this section now the commitment of unswerving unwavering planters and waterers in first corinthians chapter 3 reading from verse 6 first corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 i have planted apollo's watered but God gave the increase. Paul the Apostle knew what he was called to do. He'll plant a church over here. He'll be at Corinth. He'll be at Ephesus. He'll be at Philippi. He'll go to Colossae. He'll go to all those places and live a vibrant church, a living church, a saved church, a steadfast church there. And then he'll bring Timothy to Ephesus. He'll bring Titus and he'll bring him to Crete. And then he'll tell them you water what has been done i'm going ahead i'm going to other places and i'm going to plant what a great ministry that we understand that as a state overseer you're not just sitting at the capital of the state and then you are there every time the local governments are there you have not gone to plant churches there the regions are there you have not gone to plant churches there and all those other places are there even where the churches have been established before you came there you have not gone there to see how the church is growing how the church is doing and now you can perfect whatever you need to perfect among them paul the apostle knew that it was not just to stay in that one place he, he went on planting and planting and planting churches and then apollos he was a good teacher and he will then water what had been done that's why paul the apostle said i have planted apollos watered but god gave the increase then he says in verse 7 in verse 7 so then neither is he that planted anything he was saying you corinthians you don't understand you are exalting the one planting the church but is god giving the increase and you are missing out on the power of god on the place of god on what god is doing you're only looking at paul but he says but the one that plants is nothing neither he that water it you're looking at apollos is a good teacher and he can make those people steadfast and stable you are not looking at god who is making the teaching ministry effective neither he that water it but god that gave that giveth the increase he gave the increase at that time until today it's still the same thing without him we can do nothing if we do anything that brings fruit at all it is god that giveth the increase and then he tells us in verse 8 in verse 8 it says now he that planteth and he that watereth are one they're united he that planteth and he that watereth they are not making any kind of comparison they are not making any preferences they are not saying i envy you they are not saying you envy me and they are not debating they are not contradicting one another because he that planteth and he that watereth they are one they're ministering for the same purpose and they want to achieve the same goal their goal is to take those people who have been brought into the king into the kingdom of God, make them stable, make them steadfast, and make them grow in the Lord until Christ will come and take them to heaven. 
and so he that planteth and he that watereth are one and that's why it is uh, not wise that is why it is not scriptural to be making comparison uh, pastor so and so is uh, good in this area but you know pastor so and so another one is better in this area we want this and we want that we should leave that in the hands of God because it is God that gives the increase and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor his own reward according to his own labor don't allow anybody to distract your attention uh, uh, saying that hi about this hi about this concentrate on what God has called you to do because if you concentrate on your labor on your calling on your commitment on the uh, thing the Lord has given you to do you will receive your reward according to your own labor there are three things here number one the undeniable cooperation between uh, planters and waterers the undeniable cooperation between planters and waterers it tells us in those uh, verses chapter 3 first corinthians chapter 3 reading from verse 6 all through to verse 8 well, which you are just read now i have planted apollos watered but god gave the interest increase they accepted each other they loved each other they appreciated one another they were not saying well it's because of you now people are rejecting me is because of you now people don't appreciate me they accepted each other and they lifted up the ministry of one another it tells us in second corinthians chapter 6 and we're looking at verse 1 second corinthians chapter 6 we're reading here from verse 1 here it says we then as workers together with him can you imagine that god is there and then you come there as paul he comes there as apollos and god is at the center and then you are walking with god and then you are arguing among yourselves you are arguing between yourselves and god is looking at you how will that be there was cooperation among them because we then as workers together with him beseech you also that she received not the grace of god in vain their message was the same their attitude the same their compassion the same their purpose the same their goal the same wanting the people to remain to abide in the grace of god look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says for he saith, i have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation have i succored thee behold now is the accepted time that's what the evangelist is saying and the one who comes to follow up he sees those who have not fully yielded to the lord he repeats the same thing now is the accepted time behold now is the day of salvation that's the emphasis that ought to be with everyone it tells us in ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 11 cooperation not competition cooperation not contradiction cooperation and it, there's no conflict they are cooperating together ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and he gave some apostles not everybody some and he gave some prophets not everybody some and he gave some evangelists not everybody some and he gave some pastors and teachers and then he tells us the purpose in verse 12 he says for the perfecting of the saints we need people we need ministers that will develop the saints that will mature the saints that will edify the saints for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry we need the ministers after the evangelists has come after the preachers have come and they have gone to other fields that will raise up workers that will develop workers and develop the ministries of those workers for the edifying of the body of christ in verse 13 it says until till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ 
was for China. Here is the purpose. Here is where we have the waters, the people that will come and do the follow up and do the discipling. It says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sledge of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in which to deceive. Number one, the undeniable cooperation between the planters and the waters. Number two is the undiminished continuation to purge out the weeds. You know, as you plant, as you cultivate, weeds may go up, tears may go up, and if you are not vigilant, if you are not watchful, the tears will grow up and overcome and spoil all that you have planted there. That's why we need the people that will come and take the weeds away. It tells us in First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7, so then, neither you see that planteth anything in neither he that watereth but god that giveth the increase and then in verse 8 in verse 8 it says now he that planteth and he that watereth are one they're united they're cooperating together there's no disagreement among uh, between them and every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor and then in the first part of verse 9 it tells us for we are laborers together with god we are laborers together with god he are god's husbandry he are god's building if there are weeds coming up we need to approach all those weeds Otherwise, the tears will destroy the harvest and will destroy the souls. In John chapter 15, we're reading from verse 2. John chapter 15, verse 2. It tells us, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. That's why the purging is necessary. That's why the uh, that's why the correction is necessary. That's why the uprooting of the weeds. That's why it is necessary so that there'll be growth and so that there'll be the perfecting of the work. In First Thessalonians chapter three, looking at verse ten. First Thessalonians chapter three. Reading from verse 10, it tells us night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face. He had preached the gospel to the Thessalonian believers and many of them had turned to the Lord. They were waiting now for the coming of the Lord and yet he was thinking about them. He was planning to get back to them again. Why? He says, we we'll pray night and day that he might come to perfect that which was lacking in their faith. To perfect what was lacking in their faith. The third part there is the unfailing companionship and partnership in the work. Unfailing companionship and partnership in the work and look at it now from first corinthians chapter 3 reading from verse 6 first corinthians chapter 3 is talking about how they will cooperate together and how they will work together and they move on together hand with hand and shoulder to shoulder and might with might so that the work of the Lord will be done as they cooperated together. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, looking at verse 6, I have planted and Apollos watered is also always bringing the companionship. I did this and then the other person did that. I concentrated on this, on my calling and the other fellow complimented what I did and concentrated on his calling. I have planted and Apollos watered but 
God gave uh, the increase. He tells us in verse 7, in verse 7, he tells us, he says, Then, so then, uh, neither is he that planteth anything. Uh, there is no one that is exalting his office, anyone exalting his ministry, anyone exalting his uh, calling above the calling of all the other people that will want to be the lone tree in the forest and the lone preacher in the hole on the field and the lone evangelist the lone person that will do everything he wants to plant he wants to water he wants to evangelize he wants to edify he wants to run the hill he wants to go into the valley he wants to be the all in all he says no neither is he that planteth anything and not he that watereth but God that gave the increase and gave the increase God knows what he's doing he brings in this and he brings that this one in he sends that one out he sends that one out he brings others back and then all of them are cooperating and they are concentrating on what the Lord has called them to and there's none that is feeling indispensable if I'm not there the church will not move on if I'm not there everything will collapse if i'm not there everything will scatter and if something is not you know proper then it's happy i told them i told them that if i am not there it will not it will not work at all he feels that god is even helpless and god cannot even do anything if he is not there but you know that's a lie before you came into the world before you came into the kingdom god has always been there and when you pass on out of the stake god will still be there it is god that gives the increase we need to understand that and understand that the companionship we have is based on the strength of god on the grace of god the god that gives the increase it tells us in verse 8 it says in verse 8 now he that planteth and he that watereth are one if there's disunity that's carnality if there's disunity that is self if the disunity that's the flesh that is a playing a game there but he says he that planteth and he that watereth are one and every man every man of course every woman every worker every leader every preacher every overseer every region overseer every pastor every evangelist every leader every minister will receive his own reward according to his own labor i pray you receive your reward but you must labor if you are going to receive a reward but if you are folding your hand if you are just looking at the other people laboring and sweating and getting the work done and you are on the fence are you going to receive a reward i pray you will labor i said i pray you will labor i said i pray you will labor you labor with all your strength you labor with all your power you labor with all your skill will you labor with all the commitment you have you labor with all your consecration you labor with all your skill will you labor with all your talent everything you've got you labor and then your reward will be according to your labor in jesus name and then you always labor with the realization in verse 9 in verse 9 it tells us it says for we are laborers we're like slaves we're laborers we're not boss we're not master we're laborers together with god god is the master christ is the master god is the overall boss is the head of the church and we are just helping hands and i pray i will stay in my place and you will stay in your place and god and christ will be all in all in jesus name we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry and ye are God's building. And let's join in verse 10 now. In verse 10, look at what verse 10 is saying. It says, according to the grace of God which is given unto me. That's what you ought to have. And whatever you are doing in the kingdom of God, anywhere you are in the kingdom of God, is according to the grace of God which is given unto each one as a one. Wise master builder you must build according to pattern i have 
laid the foundation, another builded thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. And I pray that as we build according to pattern, according to the specification of the word of God, you will not lose your reward in Jesus' name. All that it takes to be all we ought to be, that carnality will be totally stamped out, no strife and no competition and no carnality and no division, that everything will be stamped out, the Lord will cleanse us and wash us and make us humble at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever good thing is done, we give the glory to God and we allow God to be God while we are messengers and ministers and laborers and preachers underneath, under his authority and the wisdom that it needs to build what God wants to build the Lord will sustain every one of us in the work in Jesus name and the work will prosper in our hands together in Jesus name will be sincere will be faithful and then will walk as if this might be the last day when I will do anything for the Lord so that if the Lord will come anytime he will meet you at the post of duty in Jesus name let's rise up now and take everything we have learned to the Lord that the Lord himself will accomplish his work through us that will not be careless will not be negligent and we will not be like the corinthian believers there will be no carnality in our midst there will be no carnality in your heart open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer everything we have learned today and you, are, you cannot do anything by yourself without him you are nothing without his strength you are nothing without his power you are nothing without his grace you are nothing let the grace of God come abundantly in your life that all that you ought to be all that you ought to do the Lord will accomplish through you in Jesus name and that you will abide where the Lord has put you no competition there's no strife, there's no argument, and there's no debate, there's no pulling things apart, there's no, I'm for Paul, I'm for Apollos, I'm for Savers, and there is nothing here that will bring division and destruction among us. Call upon the name of the Lord and let the study today be reaching on the table of your heart so that the will of God, the work of God will be done successfully through you, through me, through us, through every one of us in Jesus' name.